Hi, everyone. My name is Ali Ramadan. I'm one of the developers of the Oceanians Julia package. Today, I thought I would give a short introduction on how you might simulate the ocean or ocean type stuff in Julia. Uh, even though it's called Oceanians, you can simulate a lot of incompressible um, fluid flows with it. So here, I'm on the uh, Oceanians GitHub page. And basically, what the package does is kind of what the one liner suggests fast and friendly fluid dynamics on CPUs and GPUs. So of course you want it to be fast so you can do research with it, um, but also friendly um, so it's easy to use um, so you could be more productive, uh, especially compared to existing ocean models in Fortran, which can be sometimes hard to use. Um, so the package was developed as part of the uh, Climate Modeling Alliance project. And a lot of what we use it for is kind of simulating high resolution ocean turbulence. So a lot of it is kind of this um, convection and turbulence of the ocean surface. So these are kind of just pictures here, but there's also YouTube videos you can look at. But today we're gonna run one of these simpler examples um, just to show you how Oceanians works, how you use it. Um, hopefully by the end of it, we'll make this animation. Um, so I'll explain what's going on here uh, when we make it. But let's go back to GitHub and we'll open the documentation. So I'll just click the blue documentation badge. And then we'll go to the second example. So that's the two-dimensional turbulence example. Um, so it shows kind of how to use some of the more basic features of Oceanians, um, but we'll just go through with it. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is set up your grid. So here we're gonna say we want a grid with 128 by 128 grid points. So it's just gonna be 2D. So we set the number of grid points in the vertical to be just one. Um, and then for the extent we want uh, X and Y to go from zero to two pi. Um, and it doesn't matter what you put for Z here. And then we wanna construct the model. So here's where a lot of the model configuration happens. So we want to use this wrench cut at three or RP3 time stepper, which is basically an algorithm for advancing your solution in time. Uh, and we want to use this upwind biased fifth order advection scheme, um, which is kind of a fifth order accurate um, advection scheme. And advection schemes are these numerical algorithms for like transporting quantities. So if you want to move momentum or you want to move temperature or tracers, um, so advection schemes do that for you. Uh, we pass it the grid and we say we don't want any tracers or buoyancy in this model it'll just be the it'll just be velocities um, and we're going to use this uh, isotropic diffusivity uh, turbulent closure uh, so in this case we're just setting the viscosity to be a constant 10 to the minus 5. Uh, so viscosity is kind of like diffusion but for momentum and we want to initialize the model so we're going to generate some random numbers. So rand generates numbers between zero and one. Um, and we're gonna set them to u naught. So u naught will just be the initial velocity um, for u. So a lot of times in ocean modeling or geophysical fluid dynamics, uh, the velocities are denoted by u, v, and w. Um, so that would be for the x, the y, and the z velocity components. And then we're gonna subtract the mean just so we have initial, uh, or the initial velocities will have zero mean. It'll look nicer. Uh, and then we want to set u to be these random numbers you generated and same thing for v. Um, and now we're going to, yeah, this is one of the cooler features of ocean Indians, I think. Um, so uh, we're going to extract the model velocities. We're going to import this abstract operations um, sub package. Um, and basically what it lets us do is we want to compute extra fields that the model doesn't already do for us. So the first thing we might want to compute is vorticity. Um, so in this case, this is the vertical component of vorticity. And the way you would calculate it is the x derivative of v minus the y derivative of u. Um, so the code looks very similar to the math, which is pretty neat, I think. Um, so once you tell it how to compute vorticity, you create a computed field object. So that stores the vorticity as the model is time stepping. Um, and as well, we might want to compute the speed of the flow. So in this case, that's just u squared plus v squared and you take a square root. Um, so we can construct another computed field for that. Uh, and then we will want to construct a simulation. So, so far we've set up the grid, we've set up the simulation. 
Um, we told her what fields we want to compute. And now we're going to set up the simulation. So first thing we might want to do is set up this progress function. So as the simulation is time stepping, it'll print some progress as it goes along. And then we set up the simulation. And we're going to say, oh, we'll use a time step of 0 0.2. And we'll stop the simulation once time reaches 50. And every 100 iterations, we're going to print some progress message. Uh, so once we've created the simulation, we might want to add some output writers to it so it can write things to disk in case we want to analyze them later or plot them. So in this case, we're going to use this GLD2 output writer. So if you're not familiar with GLD2, it's this kind of pure Julia file format. And we're going to give it the model, the fields we want it to output. I'm going to give it a schedule. So we'll say write output basically every two units of model time. Uh, the file will be called two-dimensional turbulence. And then force equals true, I guess, just overwrites any existing files if they exist. And then you just run the simulation, and it kind of starts time stepping, and it will print that progress function we defined. Um, and so we only told it to, to go to 50, so it stopped. And then now we have the data that's saved to disk, so we're just going to plot it. So we're going to need the GLD2 package, open the file, and then parse out the um, iteration numbers um, for all the outputs. And then we pull out the X and Y values for the vorticity and the speed fields. And now we can make the animation. So in this case, we're using plots.jl. Um, and if you're not super familiar with plots.jl, it's kind of cool because it has this uh, at animate macro. So you just tell it how to make uh, a single frame and you put it inside the at animate macro and it ends up making the movie for you. So in this case, we're pulling out the, for each frame, we're pulling out the time, we're pulling out the vorticity, and we're pulling out the speed. And then we pick kind of color bar ranges, um, aspect ratios, you know, lots of just plot properties. Um, and then we make a plot for the vorticity and a plot for the speed. And then we put them together and you finally get that animation. So I guess what's going on here is we're kind of initializing, we're putting some random um, velocities to start with. Uh, the idea is they'll kind of all decay, um, but you end up with this pretty neat looking two-dimensional turbulence. Um, one of the features of 2D turbulence is that um, you initially, they, a lot of the turbulence collects into larger scales. So in this case, you start with um, lots of small vortices because um, the initial field is random, but then as the simulation goes on, the vortices kind of merge and you end up with um, larger vortices, but fewer of them. Um, so I think it's kind of a neat example to look at. Um, so thanks for watching. Hopefully that was useful, or at least the movie was kind of cool to look at. Um, so if you think if you have to simulate fluids in your future, maybe check out Oceanians.